Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli and welcome back to a episode of Ask Alec. Today's question comes from one of my readers, Johnny from Illinois says, when are you when you are playing against amateur poker players, do you see it as an advantage or can it distract you? What would you say is the win ratio uh, for a pro against an amateur as well? And what are some tips you have for playing against amateur poker players in general? So great question. Um, the first thing thing I will say is that your goal should always be to play against amateurs if you want to win money. If your goal is to improve at poker, you might want to play against better competition to help you challenge you in a way that you haven't been challenged before. But if your goal is to win money strictly, the difference in win rate, your win rate is the difference in skill between you and your opponents. So by playing against inferior players, you're going to have an increased win rate. So your goal should be to play against amateur players. Now to answer your question about a win ratio, this will depend largely on your playing style. If you have an extremely tight, aggressive, very conservative playing style, you could win upwards of 70% of sessions. That doesn't necessarily mean, however, that just because you win more often that you're going to win the most money. It just means you're going to win more often, even though you might have smaller returns because you're not pushing every edge. If you are more loose, still very aggressive, and you play more hands, you might have more volatility you might win more long term because you're pushing more marginal edges, but you're not going to win as often. You might only win something like 55% of your sessions, but when you have those wins, you're going to have huge wins. You've all played against players that fit into both categories. In the former, you're going to have a very tight, conservative, aggressive player, maybe someone like, I don't know, John Jawanda maybe comes to mind. Uh, and on the latter end of the scale, you're going to have a very loose, aggressive, like, seemingly reckless player even though they have a very formulaic strategy that's hopefully winning something like tom Dwan, right has very high swings but wins large amounts of money when he does win right the former a better example is probably something like barry greenstein both styles win both very methodical but they approach the game differently one's going to win more often maybe have smaller wins the latter's going to win less often have bigger wins right but both of them are going to be winning players and winning more than 50 percent of the time regardless of whether they're playing against pros or amateurs now let's talk a little bit about how you want to approach the game against amateurs because one of the things I'm hearing most often from readers, clients, and students alike is that they have difficulty putting amateurs on a hand. It's as if they're saying that just because amateurs play more hands, that somehow means they can't identify what hands they're likely to be holding or what their hand range is as we professionals like to call it in the poker world so i think that the, i understand this approach and i sympathize with this idea in some respects even though pros are technically better players it's easier to sort of identify what types of hands they have because they're playing so many fewer hands for example if a pro raises under the gun in a cash game it's unlikely they're gonna, it's, it's likely you're gonna be able to identify roughly the range of hands they have, right? They're not raising under the gun in a cash game with that many hands because it's not profitable to do so. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're playing against a very loose, reckless, crazy player and they raise under the gun, they're liable to have anything. So it's hard, not necessarily anything, they're not gonna have seven deuce offsuit, but they could have more hands than the professional, so therefore it's harder to put them on a specific hand. Now that doesn't mean that there isn't a solid approach that you could take towards these players, nor does it mean that you can't have a winning strategy. In fact, you're gonna win more money long-term against players that are playing incorrectly, not adhering to the principles of game theory, don't have a foundational approach, and that are playing too loose because they're mathematically um, putting themselves at a disadvantage by playing too many hands from under the gun, for example. So against these types of players, it is true that you're not gonna have as many options, right? And that's something that people often complain about. When you're playing against very loose, like reckless players that are calling stations and never fold, you're not gonna have the options that you have against a pro. You're not gonna be able to like outplay them. The way to outplay them is different than it is against a pro. Against a pro, you can maybe maneuver a little bit, you can apply pressure, you could force them to fold. You know, they're maybe fearful of 
certain situations where they're not willing to put in too much money without strong hands. And you can take advantage of that against a better player that's capable of hand reading that adheres to what they're supposed to do in certain situations. Against a loose, reckless player that's crazy, that's not going to do anything other than call down, you really have to, you really only have very limited options against this player. You basically have to have a good hand, you have to play stronger foundational hands than them, and you pretty much have to stick to the principles of solid foundational poker. You can't really try and, you know, bluff check raise them or outplay them by being looser than them or three betting them with marginal hands and taking advantage of the fact that they're loose, other than you have to just play strong hands, play your top 10, 15%, and keep the odds in your favor by playing hands that are better than them. So that's really the way to outplay amateurs that play too many hands, is you just play an ABC style of poker. You might have heard the famous quote, you never try and bluff a billionaire. A lot of people learn that the hard way, but that's basically what you have to do against players that just don't fold or that play too many hands. You don't have that many options, but it's really important to distinguish that that doesn't necessarily mean you can't win. In fact, you're going to win more money because these players are playing way looser, given that you adhere to the principles that we just discussed in this video. So it's really important that you're just playing a linear range of hands. And by linear range, I mean hands that are in the top quadrant of the value hands that you can have. So for example, you don't want to be playing small suited connectors against a maniac player. You don't want to be in there with something like five, six suited because they are liable to have anything. You're not necessarily going to bust them if you hit your hand. You want to be in there with something like queen jack suited that's likely to dominate the hand that the loose aggressive maniac has. So you just want to play strong value hands. You want to three bet your value hands against them to isolate them when you're in position. You want to try and get the pot heads up against them and you don't want to do anything too creative. I mean, you want to value bet when you have it. You want to bet big when you have it. You want to bet to protect your draws. You maybe want to take a stab at a pot and see bet once or twice, but you don't really want to be three barreling, bluffing off your stack, trying to get them to fold a marginal hand, because that's just a way to increase your variance and probably lose money against a player that isn't going to do anything other than call you. So it's really important that when playing against amateurs, you understand the level that they're thinking on and only aim to think one level higher. I see so many otherwise good players that are much better than their competition losing money unnecessarily and justifying that loss with silly nonsense that only applies to good, better players. They say something like, well, you know, I had the best hand I could have, I have to call. And it's like, yeah, against a really good player that's putting you to the test for all your chips, that's going to understand that, you know, this is the best hand you could have and that knows how to hand read, they're going to put you to a test. Yes, you have to protect your range. You have to call it off sometimes and you have to, you know, not make yourself too exploitable by overfolding. But against a complete amateur that has like, that isn't thinking on this level at all and they're just thinking, you know, these are my two cards. I'm going to play if I have it. I'm going to fold if I don't. You don't have to consider any of that stuff. You only have to think one level higher than your opponents, not seven levels higher, right? So the goal isn't to think on the highest level. It's to think one level higher than that of your opponents. And I think otherwise really good players that are capable of playing the game on a much higher level than their competition get this shit twisted and then they put themselves in tough situations because they're thinking on such a high level that they miss the simplicity of the essence of the game and what they need to be doing against a lot of players in many situations. If you're playing something like 1-3, 2-5, no limit hold'em, even 5-10 in some casinos against some of the players in your game, this strategy that we just discussed will work for you, right? You want to use basic principles of hand reading and solid foundation, solid fundamentals to outplay your opponents. It's It actually is surprisingly simple. The reason that it doesn't work in practice is that people get bored. They don't feel like they have any creativity in the game, right? They're pretty much handicapped, right? The game becomes reduced from something like chess to something like checkers because there's not that many options you have when the correct strategy is only to play the top 10% or top 15% of hands against your opponent. You basically have to sit there, wait for a good hand, three bet it, hope to hit the flop, bet when you have it, check when you don't. Like it's kind of boring if you're being honest to beat extreme amateurs. It is kind of a boring game, right? It's more fun, even though it's more difficult to play against better players. It's sort of like the same in basketball. If you play against a six-year-old, 
the strategy to win is obvious, right? You just dribble the ball to the hoop, shoot a layup and win. But after a while, it gets kind of boring, right? And so that's the same approach that you have to have to poker if your goal is to win money. A lot of people's goal is to improve their game. They want to play against better players. They want to challenge their self. They want to see how good they are. Okay. But if your goal is strictly to win money, it's pretty basic against a very amateur player. Now, a lot of people struggle with specifics of hand reading. How do you put amateurs on a range? How do you understand exactly what hands they have or types of hands they have pre-flop, post-flop, on the turn, on the river, when they're bluffing? When are they not bluffing? When are they value bending thin? How do you know when to bluff them? Right? And those things are beyond the scope of what we can cover in this video. But I did create a system that I use in every decision I make in at the poker table. It's a very simple process that I walk you through. It's a step-by-step -step process. I put it together in a PDF. It's absolutely free. You could download it at the link below. Simply enter your name and email. I'll send it over and that's it. It's my hand reading system and I made it available to you guys because I wanted you guys to be able to improve in spots like these and be able to correctly identify your opponent's range in spots that are seemingly difficult, but that I've really tried to systematically break it down and make it easy in a step-by-step -step to follow process. So if you like the concepts in this video, you want a little bit more, you want to try and take your game to the next level, click the link below and I'll send it right over to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have more questions for me, leave them in a comment below. Otherwise go to consciouspoker.com contact. You can click the link below and submit your questions to me. I will pick the best ones and include them in future videos. Thank you guys so much for your time. You guys are awesome. I appreciate your support and subscribe to my channel if you want more content. I'll see you guys next time on Ask Alec. Cheers.